Hello, and thanks for joining us for France in Focus. Coming to you from the French Alps, or the Trois Vallées to be precise, the largest skiing area in the world, where you have an incredible 600 kilometers of slopes to choose from. Well, every ski season, some one and a half million people from right across the globe come here, which is great news for the local economy. But in this edition, we ask, what about the impacts on the environment? Well, let's start by taking a look at the situation at ski resorts right across France as they face ever-growing numbers of visitors. These snow cannons are just part of the decor on the French ski slopes. Artificial snow was installed on ski resorts in the 70s to make up for unfavourable weather conditions. Now, with global warming, the snowmaking market has stepped up. But the problem is that the process uses a lot of water. For one hectare of snow, 4,000 cubic metres of water is needed. The direct effect of pumping water from rivers is that it reduces the amount of water available downstream and so it increases the impact of pollution. This then has serious consequences on aquatic life, which could totally be eradicated in certain mountain streams. When the first resorts opened at the beginning of the century, skiing was only practised by a small number of people. It was after the Winter Olympics in Chamonix in 1924 that the sport really took off, attracting more and more new enthusiasts. Today, France is the number one country worldwide for winter sports, with 350 ski resorts, more than 3,000 ski lifts and more than 50,000 day skiers each winter. To accommodate the rising number of visitors, brand new ski resorts were built from scratch in the 60s and 70s, but their construction was detrimental to the environment in terms of the amount of energy they used. According to a recent carbon footprint survey, the transportation of people on ski resorts is responsible for more than half of the greenhouse gas emissions they produce, but skiing itself only makes up about 2% of CO2 emissions. Waste is also a big pollutant on ski resorts, but for some years now, the behaviour of holidaymakers has changed. I try not to smoke on the slopes, so I don't litter the cigarette butts. We were in the woods and we found some tissues on the ground. That's not the way to protect nature, is it? According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the average temperature could rise by 4.8 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. It's a scenario which could lead to the loss of up to 60% of ski resorts in the French Alps. In its latest report, the French National Audit Office condemned the inadequate response of ski resorts to rising global warming. Well, as we saw there, there are quite a few issues facing French ski resorts as far as the environment is concerned. So what's the situation like here? Well, to tell us more, I'm joined now by Pascal de Tiersan. Pascal, you're the uh, president of the Trois Vallées company and you look after all the infrastructure here as far as lifts are concerned and so on. Let me start by asking you, what are the main challenges you're facing here as far as the environment is concerned? Well, we're facing a number of challenges in terms of the environment. The first is connected to the installations of the ski lifts we have here that you see all over the area. We decided to reduce the number of lifts and use the highest performance models with the least number of pylons on the landscape. Here at Courchevel, the Ariandas lift has replaced four teleskis, one electric substation that was on the ski area, and four high-tension power lines. So we're getting back to the original look of the resort. Do you get the impression that people come here are growing more aware of their duty in as far as the environment is concerned? We have noticed this interest through client surveys. Five years ago, 30% of our clients were concerned about the environment. Today, it's 40%. So we've taken that into account and adapted our investment plan to that concern, notably with regards to energy. For the past 10 years, we've been buying green energy, and for our lifts, we use energy-saving technology. On our lifts here, we've put in place new motors that use 20% less energy and are less noisy. 
This cable car, all the lighting and sound, is powered by solar panels and batteries, so it can work both day and night. Pascal, can you share any anecdotes with us uh, regarding environmental changes that you've noticed here? We are seeing real consequences, a real impact from climate change. Snow comes 10 days later in November and leaves 15 days earlier in May. We still have a beautiful season, but it's a bit shortened, so we've put strategies in place to guarantee snow during the winter. And lastly, Pascal, let me ask you this. How do you see the future of French ski resorts? Because clearly doing nothing isn't an option, is it? No, doing nothing isn't an option. We have ideas for how the resorts of the future should be. The most important point for me is the environmental impact and respecting the environment. During the winter, everything's fine, there's snow. But it's during the summertime when the snow is gone that the resorts have a less romantic image. So here at Courchevel, we use native seeds to replant our work sites, to bring the prairies back like they were before. We've also streamlined the ski area to allow for fewer lifts. And we're doing a lot of maintenance work during the summer on the pastures. In the past, there were a lot of herders who grazed their flocks here. Now there are fewer. We're filling in for them a bit, clearing out the brush. So we're also here restoring the landscape. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. Pascal de Tiersel, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Tom. As we've been saying, there's a growing sense of awareness here and in other ski resorts across France of environmental issues and the need to do something about them. We're going to find out more now about one initiative called Flocon Vert, or Green Flake, which aims to make mountain tourism more sustainable. The Green Snowflake label demands that no less than 21 social and environmental criteria be fulfilled. And so far, five French ski stations have been deemed worthy. Firstly, resorts must support local sustainability projects. Les Rousses, for example, has installed wood-burning heating for nearby schools. Supporting local heritage also has to be a priority, and all the better if agriculture can benefit too. Every year when the ski season comes to an end, Chamrousse plants fresh grass seeds on its slope, feeding local herds and stabilizing the topsoil. Year-round sustainable development initiatives are also key. Chamonix Mont Blanc adopted a climate stabilizing plan in 2012. Its objective, to reduce both its energy needs and its greenhouse gas emissions by 20%. The plan also aims to up the station's use of renewable energies by a fifth by 2020. At the Pierre Saint-Martin station in the Pyrenees, a push to optimize energy consumption has seen a 5% reduction in the energy required to produce its artificial snow. Lastly, any station aiming for the green snowflake stamp of approval needs to show a fundamental respect for the natural environment and its resources. Châtel Station for One succeeded in significantly reducing its car traffic after installing a new ski lift between two resorts. Well, making sure all of the pieces are safe to ski on and in good order requires careful planning, a hard-working team and lots of snow plows. And all of that is the responsibility of Benjamin Blanc. Hi there, Benjamin. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Tell us a little bit about what's so special about this machine. It's quite a special machine because it's hybrid meaning that it has a diesel engine along with an electrical generator that can allow for a 20% fuel saving, which isn't negligible in an area as big as the Belleville Valley, including Val Torrens, Les Menuires and Saint-Martin de Belleville. OK, so Benjamin, can we go on and uh, have a ride? Come on. So Benjamin, how many of these uh, snow plows do you have? We have 15 machines, which are operational every night in two workstations. Each one is manned by two drivers so that the machine can run all night, seven days a week. 
Okay, with so many of these snow plows going up and down the mountain all the time, how do you coordinate them all so they're in the right place doing the right thing at the right time? Alors, nous avons un, un logiciel qui s'appelle SnowSat qui nous permet uh, de prendre les bonnes décisions. We have a software called SnowSat which allows for the right decisions to be made at the right time. It digitally maps the skiable zone on our slopes to the nearest centimeter. This means we can accurately manage the snow to produce it and shape it with machines, which can be expensive. So tell me a bit more about this idea of creating fake snow for ski resorts. How does that work? For snowmaking, all you need is water and air. So with snow guns, we just recreate what happens in a cloud. There's a pole that sprays water under pressure, and when it comes into contact with cold air, the water transforms into snow. Okay, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Benjamin Blanc, thank you so much. Well, this is where we leave you, somewhere between Meribel and Courchevel for this edition of France in Focus. Thank you very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you again soon here on France 24. Reporters, presented by Mark Owen. It is illegal, but in the rule...